Hi there. Today I have spent a most wonderful time exploring the Cote de Bar. Now the Cote de Bar is perhaps one of the lesser known regions of Champagne, but in my mind at the moment, this is an area where there is such vitality. There is so much going on. And I was lucky enough to spend the morning with Colette, a local winemaker, an organic grower, and she is such a great ambassador for the Cote de Bar. So here I'm going to let her tell you her story, her family's story, all about this wonderful region, Cote de Bar and organic grape growing. Stay with me and listen to Colette's story. The climate, of course, and the soil, because it's completely different from the north of Champagne. Um, the clay, the limestone clay soil, gives wines very strong in the mouth, very long in the mouth, very fruity, um, good minerality. So, um, can I have the same variety of grapes on the different part of the Champagne? The Champagne will be completely different. That's the most important in Champagne. I didn't choose a lot of the variety grapes. I know the place is very uh, good for, um, the soil is very good for Pinot Noir, especially. Uh, now we want to produce our own wine, so it was necessary to grow Pinot Blanc or Chardonnay. Pinot Blanc because uh, it, historically it was here and gives wines completely different from the Chardonnay, so it was interesting to keep this kind of variety grapes. But my, my grandmother, my great uncle, did that for me. Uh, just to follow the way of growing and I think it's very important uh, for the history of, um, of my vineyard. After I grow some Chardonnay because it was possible in some piece of land to grow Chardonnay because there was no problem with frost at springtime so have this Chardonnay so it was important for the quality and the blend of my wines. Um, in fact it's easy because the vineyard come from my parents and grandparents. This is my great mother and my great uncle with my great great parents there were probably 20, no more than 20 years on this photography. And my great uncle, Henri Barrois, wrote his diary, like this one. And in this diary, he explained what he do every day in the vineyard. So I now have white grapes, Pinot Noir. I know everything about the vineyard, uh, the same part of the vineyard, the name of the vineyard, as I know it's the same. So I know um, the vineyard I grow uh, has more than 100 years. So, uh, so I know everything about that. Uh, I don't have a favorite part of the grapes. Um, I love some way of pruning. For example, I like to prune the Chardonnay because the way of pruning is completely different. It's very interesting, it's very technical, so I like this way of pruning. Uh, Pinot Blanc is very special, but you don't have a lot of wood, so when you prune it, you have to be careful. It's completely different, but I don't have a special variety grapes, no. Um, we used to have Pinot Noir, of course, but many sorts of, um, before the Champagne air producing, uh, we had a lot of many sorts of variety grapes, like Gamay, for example, uh, Pinot Gris, Direct. So uh, in uh, 1911, there are so many sorts of grapes, uh, and it was not important. The most important is you have to go to a good plant to give grapes. And um, our history is that in the 80s, the big uh, brand, the Champagne Houses, asked us to grow Pinot Noir because they need Pinot Noir for their um, cuvee, for their brand, and it's what my parents did. But it changed now because the young wine, gro uh, wine growers want to have their own champagne, they produce, they are champagne maker and not so uh, um, uh, sell grapes uh, as I done and my family did before. Um, so it's necessary for her to have many sorts of grapes to make different sorts of champagne and for the blend. It was, um, came back in the vineyard in 1999 uh, 1992, sorry. Um, I went to school for two years to learn my job because I was a travel agent. 
so it was completely different. Uh, I used to go to the vineyard with my parents, but I was not able to, to be a wine grower, so it was necessary for me to go to school. So I learned my job, uh, an organic vineyard, and um, a few years later, I was pregnant, uh, was having a baby, and uh, I wanted to change my, my way of life. In fact, um, at the beginning of the 19th, um, 92, 93, it was difficult to sell a bottle of champagne. And with the young wine growers of Champagne, we decided to, to, to make wines completely different, to, to get a better price for the bottles, to find other markets. So it was very interesting. And I went to Burgundy to visit um, wine growers, practice biodynamic wine growing, organic wine growing, or even non-organic, but they grow differently. And uh, for me, it was uh, very special. When I came back, I said, um, you're not your job very well. You have something else to do. And because I was pregnant, I have to protect my health. And I said, what would happen to my child, to my baby, if I died with cancer? So I have to, to change everything. Um, I start to be perform in biodynamic wine growing. It's very important and very interesting, uh, this kind of uh, growing, wine gr growing. You know, usually the children come with you in the vineyard and I don't want them to touch the chemicals on the leaves. So I say, no, it's more better to breathe the chemicals. No, I said no. I prefer to change now. It was difficult because I was only a grape seller, some person grape seller. So when you have no harvest, you have no money. Then when you have no money, you have no money. I started my first try in an organic vineyard in 1999. Uh, I made my certification in 2006. And even when I asked, you know, the, the form to, to fill for, for organic, for so EcoCert, I keep the form for two months to say, okay, you do, you don't. I say, okay, have to do. So it was difficult. And um, I start just a, a small part of my vineyard because I'm only, a, I only sell grapes. So if I have no grapes, I have no money. So it's a big decision to take. Uh, so I start with a small part, but I, um, I was needing my brother to help me on the tractors. And at the beginning, it was very difficult. He didn't want to help me. So uh, the first time was absolutely difficult, but. Never mind, it was the way I wanted to do. And uh, I convert my vineyard in 2006. I did that for my health, of course, first, because the chemicals you spray on the vineyard are terrible for your health. Uh, health to protect, of course, the soil and the water, because I drink the water on the tap. So it was necessary to have good water. When you start your um, uh, organic vineyard, um, you have to put money aside before <laughs> to be sure there's no problem. And to keep um, a lot of um, juice in the tank uh, because you are allowed in Champagne to keep a part of your harvest uh, in a tank to, um, if you have a bad harvest. The tank is in a bigger houses. You have the person who buy the, the grapes keep the juice for you because they, they, they work the juice for you. So they keep the juice and when you have no harvest, you are allowed, allowed to, to take back the juice. So in Champagne, it's a very good organization about that because you keep a harvest in a tank. So it was possible. Um, so when you have money, when you put money aside and then you have this money, it's possible to start organic. Um, the worst, it was 2012, no grapes at all. The mildew, it was so, you, you, day after day, you can see the grapes disappear, but disappear completely. So at the beginning of um, June, you say, well, that's okay, I've got some grapes. And day after day, the grapes disappear. It's very, it was absolutely amazing to see that. So 2012, no grapes at all. It was very difficult, only because of the disease of mildew. And uh, for the best for me, it was probably actually 2017, uh, high quality in the Côte des Bar. Uh, I test the clear wines are absolutely great. So for me, it's one of the best vintage. Uh, the first thing that's more difficult is to control the grass. Because you usually when you stop herbicide, you have a lot of grass, many sorts of grass. <laughs> it's very interesting, but it's very difficult. You have to employ more people. And the second thing is to control fertilizer. Uh, it's a good balance. Uh, you have to feed the vineyard, but not too much because if you feed too much of a vineyard, you have a lot of disease like mildew or idiom. So it's the first challenge you have to, to realize when you want to change and you have to be sure uh, of what you want to do. I 
village there. That's near the Subway is there. Seven kilometers. The highest point in the Champagne uh, point altitude is here. Arcoville, but you have no point of view, it's in the middle of a wood. Here you have a point of view. The difference is one meter. <laughs> As you know, if we have for the Champagne area, 150 kilometers between Epernay, Reims, from the Côte des Bas. Two climate different. Semi-continental climate here, semi-oceanic climate here. The soil different, Montagne de Reims, Sable, Marne, Vallée de la Marne, and the Côte des Blancs with shark and here came a region. But we have also near Troyes, a small village called Mongueux on Shark, specialized in Chardonnay too. And the Côte des Bar, more than 50 kilometers between one part, this part and this part. Bar sur Seine and Bar sur Aube. Bar sur Aube is more specialized in Pinot Meunier. Bar sur Seine, Pinot Noir. So we need the slope to grow the vineyard because of the heat of course, and because we need poor soil. Because if the soil is too rich, you give a lot of wood, a lot of uh, leaves, and maybe a small grapes, a lot of small grapes. So for the vineyard, it's necessary to suffer, to give the best, because when uh, a plant will die, she gives fruits, you know, to have a new plant. So the, uh, the vineyard is like that. When the vineyard suffer, it gives a lot of grapes. And we need, because in Champagne, it's quite, in the north, so we need a lot of sun, and the sun is more high on the slope of the Arnos Plateau. It's very particular, the Kimmer region, so you said this clay is more than um, 1,460,000 years, and when you soil it, um, the good soil, normal soil, this clay becomes brown soil normally. It's not very heavy, and you have some stone, and the particular are uh, well, you know, this sort of stone, a lot the oysters. It's very typical from the Kimmer region. So it gives wines um, very fruity and very long in the mouth. When you drink wines here, yeah, it's still in your mouth for a long time. And uh, I wanted to show you the small grey stones on the top. Yeah, it proves that you have piece of vineyard here since more than 200 years. Because it's the first stone to remote to grow the vineyard. You put the stone on the top of here. It's always amazing to see the roots going through the stone to get food, to get water and the minerality we need in our wines. Mm -hmm. When I start to be organic, I asked to Claude Bourguignon to come to make her hole to visit and to say if my soil is alive or not. Most my, my vineyard at this moment was only 17 years. Most part of the wood were between 40 and 50 centimeters. It was completely crazy, so it's not possible. Your vineyard have, should have roots more than three meters deep because there was too much fertilizer so the roots it's not necessary for them to go down in organic you stop that but the roots have no way than to go to to find the food to find the water it's necessary it's necessary to find some uh, superficial roots you have to keep them but when we come to a machine to take out the grass anyway the roots have to go down and I saw that when I want to change a, a piece of vineyard, when sometimes it's dead, I take away to throw it and you can see the roots like that, it's straight. So I think, okay, my vineyard is good about the roots, there's no problem. The first year when I stopped, Claude Bourguignon said you have to put some cereals between your row or to, to, to make the soil, in fact, and to protect the soil because he says um, springtime or summertime, you have to have something to cover the soil. He said, when you go out, you don't go out completely without clothes. In winter or in summer. So for the, for the soil, it's the same thing. You have always to have something to protect yourself from the erosion. And to make the soil, he said, you can spray cereals. It's what I did. Uh, wheat and some other cereals after, for three years, it was impossible to grow. The soil is not good yeah. enough to produce cereals. In fact, you stop the chemicals in the soil, you have no wheat. You die of starvation. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. So when the soil is not good enough to produce cereals or things, you have to think about it. Um, the first one, it will be uh, Gaston Sheik. 
Gaston Sheik. In 1911, we have a big revolt, wine makers revolt, because um, we had to fight in the Côte d'Ebat to stay in Champagne. And the leader of the uh, revolt was Gaston Sheik. So if it was possible, I will have a drink of Champagne with him to, to thank him to be in Champagne today. And it will be probably a Blanc de Noir, only a Pinot Noir, to explain how we changed the um, variety grapes in Côte d'Ebar, where we have a lot of Pinot Noir. I will explain the history until 1911 and uh, today. And um, the chance we have to have this kind of uh, variety grape Pinot Noir is a fantastic variety grapes, and even on our soil. And the second person will be my great uncle, my great uncle, Henri Barrois, who gave me his diary. Uh, it's very important because it's full of details, information about the the way of life at the beginning of the uh, 20th century. Uh, my great uncle was born in uh, 1884. My great mother here was born in uh, 85, 1885, so very, very old. And I will have uh, probably a Blanc de Blanc, Pinot Blanc with him because I would like to thank him to, to grow Pinot Blanc. <laughs> it's a chance for me to have these variety crepes in my vineyard. So I think um, we are very similar uh, about the characters. We are um, very similar. And it will be very interesting to, to have a glass of champagne with him. And maybe if I have to choose a third person, um, it will be my father because my father is dead uh, less 10 years now. Um, I didn't have a bottle of champagne at this moment. And um, I would like to explain how it was possible. And uh, it was uh, difficult for me um, to, to build my wine press to, because he never helped me. My father is a special man who never gave his experience even for the vineyard, even for the bees, uh, nothing, never communicate, nothing. And uh, I would like to explain to him how it was very important for me to get the history, thanks to my great uncle, not him, and to explain that, uh, that I would like him to be proud of me, <laughs> of the job I have done with his wine.